Welcome back. I'm talking with Anthony Beckett, who is the organiser of the UK Exopolitics Conferences. And there's one coming up uh, very soon on the 30th of June, and tickets are still available. This is at the Static Gallery in Liverpool, if you want to get yourself along there. And I must start by apologising, Anthony. I know you put my name on the flyer as being a speaker, and I pulled out as a speaker, but basically because I don't feel that I have enough new information on this particular subject of ET communication. Uh, I might do in a year's time, there is something that I'm working on, but uh, I am going to be at the conference. So, um, yeah, so I would like to interview Dan Sherman, who's, who's one of the speakers. Um, now then, let's just look at the speakers and we'll go through them one by one. Okay, yeah. uh, <coughs> tell us who we've got first. Yeah, well, the first event, which is in, uh, on the 30th of June, which is the Extraterrestrial Communication Conference, uh, that basically is a broadly in line with uh, the ideas like we're covering like the theme of ET communication but the underlying question behind that is like is, is it is quite broader than just ET communication I mean I've used the term extraterrestrial but it, uh, it's generally understood that we don't just mean ET we, we're talking about potentially interdimensional we don't really know that I well, use the term because it's people are familiar with it who don't know the subject mm -hmm. and it's being tailored towards people who are new to the subject. Mm -hmm. So what we start off with at the beginning of the day is, is a, a researcher called Miles Johnston, who's mm -hmm. been one of your guests on your show. Yeah, I know Miles. And he's involved with the MASH project, mm -hmm. which is uh, the Anomalous Mind Management and Abductee Contactee Helpline. Yeah. And so he's be, going to be giving us a lowdown of what, he's, what, the, what that, that group have been doing for the last, I guess, what, what, few months. And uh, he's been interviewing people who are uh, experiencers and uh, abductees. This is people who allege that they, at some point, have been taken uh, or messed with in some way by an outside entity. Uh, they've been phys either physically removed or some people claim that the, that the things happen to them while they're in their bed or wherever. Mm. And then uh, many of them claim to have missing time, where they can't remember a particular time period. And, yeah, and some of them have, uh, have had hypnotic regression that Miles Johnson has dealt with mm -hmm. and that group aims to support people who who come out with these claims yeah yeah that's right yes and they've produced quite a few videos of people who claim to be experiences of giving their testimony and some of that is quite moving you might say yeah it's, it's quite intense yeah they have a YouTube channel if you go to megawatts 1066 on YouTube that's their YouTube channel for their, their interviews yeah. which is really interesting stuff on there yeah, and, and uh, so. from my own point of view, this is an area which needs more evidence. I think there's definitely a reality to it. Yeah, it's witness uh, testimony based, which is... Yeah, it's witness testimony based, testimony based. But I'm of the view that there are other methods that you, that you can uh, use in technology prove or disprove some of these testimonies. And that is something that I'm hoping to look into, both looking at... Um, biological evidence mm -hmm. and or genetic evidence and uh, setting up uh, surveillance technology. Mm -hmm. They will be the two areas to get concrete evidence that this is or isn't a real phenomenon. Yeah. Because it's very easily dismissed by sceptics. Yeah, it's easy to kind of put that label on people when it might not just be exactly as, as clearly cut as that, isn't mm -hmm. it? I think. Mm -hmm. so, 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 yeah, that's Miles Johnson uh, opening on the day. and. Mm -hmm. uh, so, shall I move on to... Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, after, after that we Griffin. have David Griffin, who, who runs the exopolitics.org UK website and the, uh, the Facebook page is Exopolitics UK. And he's been talking about uh, the Saucer School and his title of his talk is Are ETs Rebooting the Terrestrial Language System? And so he's, he's basically been looking at uh, evidence of, from abductees' testimony. So the whole th theme of this today is, is that basically it's test witness testimony based. He's basically been looking at... Uh, correlations between different accounts. One of the things he actually covers is how like the use of language is there's a abductees for example uh, of re recounts how they've basically distilling information down in a, in a sense where they I remember from what, what he showed to predict before was like how they write down this a certain language mm -hmm. scr a weird script and they kind of re reduce it down as a, an, an aid to memory I think it was but right. it's it was an interesting concept and it's something that comes out in, in a few different um, Cases. Right. So David Griffin is basically looking across a few different cases and pointing towards is this like something that's been driven by right. another ent other entities, ETs, to affect humanity. So he's trying to look at what some of their agendas might be for actually abducting certain people and yeah, it's kind of beyond tinkering with them. Yeah, it's more, yeah. It's, I and guess he's, he's looking at things that they have said 
and trying to look at patterns. Yeah, or yeah, exactly that. Actually, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Right. Who's the next one? Uh, then we have a Frenchman called Denis Denacle. Denis is French, and he, he has he has some interesting information about some French abduction cases, which mm -hmm. we're not familiar with because obviously you know, right. language barrier wise. Mm -hmm. He speaks English, of course, <laughs> but uh, he'll be covering those and stuff. And hopefully, I'll, I think he's covering something called the Umo documents, mm -hmm. which is uh, I think. I think I forgot it was the 50s or 60s, which involved uh, scientists around the world being, I guess, seeded with documents, information, and uh, seeded by who? P p p pertaining to pertaining to be from exo civilizations, from ETs, basically. Right. And the, the problem, this is one of the problems across this board, is that it's, we're talking about testimony in some cases, and so there doesn't necessarily have to. Is there? It, some, sometimes there is, isn't evidence that you can gather. To validate something, it, it, what his research has led on to, like determining what, what extraterrestrial civilizations look like and what co communities look like and right. social systems, that kind of thing. Right. So the Umo documents, uh, they were compiled by who? Do you know who compiled uh, them? From what I understand, I don't think anybody really knows. Right. But it seems to be, from my understanding, is that it, I guess equivalent to channeled information. Right. A bit like but the uh, Billy Meyer. Possibly, yeah. He's meant to supposedly get in the channel. Yeah, I'm not the expert on this. I'm, right. I'm obviously hoping to see okay. what Dennis has got to speak about that. But yeah, that's the, the, the crux of what he's mm. speaking about. All right, so the ne next speaker we've got is Mike Oram. And uh, I like the title of his talk. Yeah, uh, Does It Rain in Other Dimensions? Does It Rain in Other Dimensions? Mm. Yes, yeah, so Miles, <laughs> sorry. Well, Mike, uh, Mike Oram and his partner actually, they went to. Uh, uh, they went to a road trip actually in the US. This must be several years ago, a few years ago now. Mm -hmm. And he obviously he's already an experiencer of some sort. And they went to do the extraterrestrial highway route, take the tour, and went to see the gate, the gate at, uh, about the entrance to Area 51, which is you know it's in pop culture. Everybody knows about it. And they had a weird a, a period of missing time from that and some weird experiences, which can only be interpreted as, as a, well, I guess, a really my lab right. type of like, that means a military, military abduction. abduction. But his experience is, it seems to be that it kind of, it, there's kind of a crossover between that and his original ET experiences. Right. And so, be, off the back of, and to, look, to cut a long story short, off the back of which was a, it was, it was a, not, it was a shared experience. It wasn't just him, it was himself, his partner, and I think there was another couple, if, if I remember correctly. Right. And uh, the bottom line is, it was that event uh, that, that made him decide to get up and do something about it. And start, so that's when right. he wrote his book. Because prior to that time, it was like a, so it was it had been happening to him, but he hadn't right. done anything to share information, for example. So do you know if he answers the question in his talk? Uh, <laughs> does it rain in I have actually dimension? heard his talk, and I don't think he did, but... Uh. <laughs> I would say that uh, it's, it's if, one of the if you accept certain modern physics, then uh, our three dimensions is part of a multi-dimensional world. Mm. Therefore, the answer will be yes. Well, my, my answer would be it's the only definition of rain. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, Mike, I, I, Mike's a really good speaker actually. We've, I've seen him a couple of times before, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm, yeah, so I'm glad to have Mike this time. So that's good. Right. All right. Yeah. Uh, well, the next speaker on the 30th of June is Dan Sherman. Now, I've featured some of his interview with Project Camelot in a talk that I gave uh, last year. Uh, now, his story takes quite a bit of explaining. Uh, <laughs> Mm, yeah. And but in a nutshell, he uh, was in the um, U.S. Air Force as a young man in the early 1980s. He was drafted into a secret NSA project, that's the National Security Agency, who are alleged to be the agency which deal with UFOs and other related subjects. He was then given special training in what he calls intuitive communications with this terminal and he could communicate with this terminal without being connected to it. He could yeah. move things around. Intuitive communication was a term his bosses used when they were telling, you know, right. training him on the job. And, and, and he believes due to certain information that he, when, once he was put onto a live project, uh, that he was getting information via this method and he didn't know where it was coming from, uh, that that information was pertaining to abduction information. So that, but it's obviously there's a lot more detail to it than that. But basically, this is a an ability that he said everyone has. It's just that his had been enhanced. The ETs, presumably, the ETs that had been working with the U.S. government had given them this technology mm. to enable them to communicate with this computer telepathically. But it also told them how to enhance this ability in him. Yeah, I think he used it to well, he's. He cl his, his story is that the, his bosses told him that he was genetically managed mm -hmm. as well as a fetus. Prior to, yeah, yeah. as a fetus prior to his birth. Yeah. 
Um, and I just have to say, when I, when I first came across this, I mean, I was, I, I was interested, I was very interested in the subject, but that, I wasn't quite sure how to get my head around that. But I remember I was listening to a Red Ice interview with, I forget who it was with, and talking about little things, about how you can actually genet switch genes on and off just using things like sound. Right. And I'm kind of now thinking, okay, well, genetically managing might be something just as playing music to a fetus. Yeah. You, if, you, if you can switch genes off and on doing that, that's a, the all of a sudden it's become plausible or, 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 at a very basic or level. Or yeah. an EM wave of so, so well, yes, similar resonant whatever, frequency yeah. or something. So when, initially, while I was interested in the thing, I was kind of sceptical about that. <laughs> After listening to Red Eyes quite recently, mm -hmm. I really, it just kind of hit me how that's even possible. Right. But, yeah. So, uh, Sherman, um, mm. if, if anyone's sceptical of this, log on to Project Camelot website and watch his interview with Kerry Cassidy, the full interview, Dan Sherman, Project Camelot. Watch that. And mm. I defy anyone to watch that and say that this guy is in any way either deluded or, or lying. He's, oh, one, he's yeah. probably the most genuine whistleblower I've ever seen, yeah. Dan Sherman. And he's coming to the UK uh, on the 30th of June, speaking at the Exopolitics Conference. Now, you can download parts of his book free of charge from this link. So I recommend everyone download, download that. As I say, it's free of charge. Download the first few chapters of his book and read that. I'll give you the background. Uh, and then get yourself along to the Exopolitics Conference, as I say, on the 30th of June in Liverpool, because this guy... Is going to be speaking there. Yeah, that's good. So, I mean, what else can you tell us, Anthony? That I mean, you've communicated with him. You've you've after, you've managed to get him to come to the UK. Well, uh, we actually invited him to the conference last year, actually, to be fair. And, mm -hmm. and he, he chose. Well, he asked if we could defer for a year, so which is why we've invited him this time. Okay. But he was invited to last year's. But um, yeah, but normally he doesn't speak. Uh, on the on the he's not a regular UFO circuit speaker yeah, anymore. Yeah, he's not someone. I mean, he has written a book, but it's not really something that he's profited from. I, I downloaded a free version of his book. I don't know where I got that from. I can't remember. It was a, a while ago. Now, one would imagine, assuming Dan Sherman is genuine, and I've got no reason to believe that he isn't. His, his story was never changed. Uh, it's, it's fixed, and it's the way that he describes the security around the NSA base that he was involved with is extremely detailed. Mm. The fact that he was in this particular room and he, and he was only allowed, to, he wasn't allowed to speak, and there was the security of getting in and out with the, um, I'm not sure if it was an eye scanner. And what one would imagine that that the information he's coming out with would be extremely sensitive. Mm. So, do you know if he's had any obfuscation or being people have tried to stop him from talking? Well, is he said it in a way? I'm not. This is not communication with me actually, but it was. He said to um, in interviews before that. He's only had, have had two experiences where kind of weird stuff's happened. And one was, I think, where he was, on, he was supposed to be, I think he was either just been on or he's going to do a radio interview at one of the main or a bit of big radio stations in the US. Mm -hmm. And he was on his mobile to the producer, and as soon as straight after the call, he got a phone call on his landline saying, just do not do it. Oh, right, and so he was told not to do yeah, it. Yeah, but right? he, he doesn't, to his, to this day, I don't, from what he says is that he still doesn't know whether that's legitimate or not. Right. So he, you know. Right, so a any other. That what you described as the security, yeah. because of the, the, the what what he was actually doing project in the projects was, you know, taking information, typing into well, taking receiving yeah. information. Yeah. There's no hard evidence of yeah. anything, yeah. which is one of the things when it comes down to the, the, this is witness testimony. So yeah. what, what what this means for the for the, is, well, the, the it's plausible deniability. Yeah, they've got there's no there's nothing he can take out of there which shows. A pr yeah. the, yeah, which, which is how which they manage the project. They make sure he that he, he, out there, which he's not leaving with anything, yeah. he's not coming in with yeah. anything. He's even given another job, so it looks like mm. he was working in that job, not in this job. Yeah, so he doesn't even know where the facility is because he was in a blacked out vehicle every time he was taken there. Yeah. So, there's, so all he can come away with is what he says. Yes, yeah, so from that perspective. So they can deny it. Yeah, 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 from that perspective, is kind of, it effectively makes it harmless as a, <laughs> right. you know, as a whistleblower in a sense, but then. That's because we're in, a, we're in a society where if you don't have a flying saucer in the back yeah. of a truck, then... <laughs> yeah, if he'd managed to smuggle anything. the box that was reading his mind, connect with the computer, then he probably wouldn't be here. Apart <laughs> from it, it was not, it was, well, not physical, it was not a physical contact, was it? So there might not even, from what I understand, it was it an actual device well, I, that it would I, have been I, access to. I haven't read his book. I would suggest that, the, it, that the, although he probably didn't see it, that he was interfacing with this computer and he was allowed to move lines up and down on yeah, the screen the training, by yeah. humming tones mentally in his mind. He could mm. move a line, right? Yeah. Now, I would imagine that's not just a Windows XP machine <laughs> he's been doing that with, that the machine 
has had it some other device, interfacing device, which is possibly being given to, to them. Yeah, I suppose that's possible. I mean, given what the nature of what he's describing that, and that it basically is really an actual, uh, well, an innate human ex uh, ability mm -hmm. that in just in him it just happens to be heightened. Mm -hmm. It's possible that you probably could do it with an XP machine because I don't, it, I it, don't think the. Int my understanding is that it's not strictly a, 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 what's the word technological. Yeah, it works through technology because you use it that way, but it doesn't have to be. Yeah, that way. Yeah, I, I, an interesting question to ask him would be whether he was told, because he said that everyone has this ability, which is telepathy, basically. That's what he's describing. Uh, which, and, and researchers such as Rupert Sheldrake that I've interviewed oh, yeah, yeah. would agree. Yeah, there is such a thing as telepathy. It's just, it's 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 suppressed or it's it's just uh, Underdeveloped. manifests itself yeah. in certain people. Yeah. But a good question to ask him would be, well, your ability was enhanced. How much are there other people who haven't, who don't need to be enhanced in order to, to be able to do what you could do? Uh, because there are loads of people who claim that they that they've got some kind of psychic ability, and yeah. people like Rupert Sheldrake are, t are trying to objectively measure and determine whether that's the case. Because mm. uh, I'm sure there are thousands of people who claim it, but. Are, but can't demonstrate it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. There was one of the things that the that Dan will talk be talking about is it's actually I think well, I think it was in his book. But he is going one of the it was when it was told when it was told about the, what the project was for. He was mm. basically informed that the reason they need to be a, had to have these intuitive communicators was because of some impending pen planetary changes, yeah. which would uh, apparently knock out all electromagnetic communications. Thus. The only way the governments around them could communicate with each other was through it was through that method. So yeah, so it's like a way of training people to do be, to be government psychics, especially when there's no communication I mean, technology. All right. When I read so, that bit, I thought that could just be a cover story, because I um, I would buy the fact that it, the information he was being given was information on abduction, uh, and if you're going to produce. A, an electromagnetic pulse weapon, for example, mm -hmm. will knock out all electromagnetic comms for a period, mm -hmm. but it won't permanently knock them out. Um, it could damage certain chips, which would render them useless and you'd have to make new ones. But a lot of military hardware have got electromagnetic shielding around yeah. them, any uh, important communications hardware. I, I, well, that would be another good question to ask him. Did he think that that might have been a cover story that they were... It could well be. Because well, yeah, then they don't have to tell them about uh, the ET well, side of it. It could well be that the whole thing was contingency planning for an eventuality that might never happen now because of right. that, like you just said. But obviously, yeah. you know, it's, tw it's 20 years ago. Remember? It's 1985 when yeah. Joy signed up. I forget which period he was. He slightly left in about, no, 93, 83 he signed up, 95 he left. So I guess around the 1990s is when he was doing it. I forget exactly when. But uh, it's so but, you know, things ch technology but, changes. So. But it's interesting if that's the, if that's true, then it means that if there is psychic ability, then it doesn't use an electromagnetic carrier. It uses some other means of, of passing <laughs> information. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, on that <laughs> note, <laughs> we'll take another break, and after the break, we're going to talk about the the August conference. <laughs>